how what is up it's your boy frosty i'm back with another one thought you guys were tired of my ass but obviously you're not so this is to you new drivers out there i want to talk to you guys about your four clocks and your four statuses so you have four statuses and they're pretty much broke down into two categories right the two categories being either working or non-working your working statuses are on duty or drive and your resting statuses are off duty or sleeper how to figure out which status you're supposed to be in at which time pretty simple if you're working you know what are you doing are you driving because if you're in driving there's a status specifically for that anything else you should be on duty for instance fueling uh, pre-trips post trips you know at the ship or stuff like that now with your resting this is pretty simple as well if you're not in the sleeper berth and you're out of the truck you should be an off duty if you're not working so moving on what are the four clocks you have four clocks there's your eight hour your 11 hour your 14 hour and your 70 hour clocks now of these four clocks you know what are they they're pretty much like timers that count down and when they get down to zero you're not allowed to drive anymore you can be on duty but you can't drive so how do these four statuses you know affect your four clocks well the statuses affect your four clocks a little bit differently now so the resting statuses are what are used to reset your clocks and your working statuses both affect your clocks in a little bit different of ways for instance with your eight hour clock you start off both on duty and drive start this clock into motion and it started ticking down a half hour break in either sleeper or off duty is what it takes to reset your eight hour clock now with your 11 hour clock it's a little bit different because your on duty status does not affect your 11 hour clock only driving your drive status of the two working statuses the drive status is the only one that affects your 11 hour clock and starts it ticking down and then either of the two statuses for resting will reset your 11 hour clock as far as your 14 hour clock this is set into motion by either on duty or drive and it starts it counting down then within a 14 hour period you are no longer allowed to drive if you take a 10 hour resting period which is either sleeper or off duty this will reset your your clock your 14 hour clock now the reason i say they're all a little bit different is because like the drive clock your 70 hour clock is only affected by your on duty and drive so and it can only be reset by 34 hours consecutively in sleeper or off duty with your 11 hour drive clock this sometimes it can be confusing because like you'll arrive at, say you drive for an hour this starts all four of your clocks running you're in you're in a working status you drive for an hour arrive at the shipper and you sit there for say six hours in sleeper berth you know you're gonna that's gonna leave you with only seven hours to drive now even though you're 11 hour clock is going to say it's got 10 hours on it because you've only wasted an hour of your 14 hour clock you have wasted six hours of sleeper berth and then one hour of drive leaving you seven hours left even though your drive clock says that you have more if your 14 hour clock only says you have seven and it gets down to zero you have to reset it or else you cannot drive so your four clocks are reset by either the eight hours reset by a 30 minute break your 11 hours reset by a 10 hour break your 14 hour clock is also reset by a 10 hour break and your 70 hour clock is reset by a 34 hours consecutively in, e in either of the resting statuses so hopefully this helps give you a better grasp now there is an exception to this uh, rule to the 14 hour clock and your drive clock and that's called the 8-2 split and what that is is if you go into sleeper berth for eight consecutive hours you will get back what you had on your clock to drive the day before and and then you have to take a the rest of the two hours in the sleeper berth to get back the rest of your time so let's put this into uh, an actual real life scenario let's just say I'm going to a shipper you know and I pull up and I'm nine hours to my appointment time, but I'm 10, I'm 10 miles away, right? So I've got nine hours to my appointment time and I have to take a break, you know? I've driven for five hours. Well, if I take eight hours in the sleeper berth, it's gonna give me back the, the hours that I had 
had left to drive the day previous, which is six hours on my clock of drive time. So that's gonna roll over to the next day after eight hours consecutively in sleeper berth. But that'll give me enough time to drive those 10 miles to the shipper to get loaded, to be there on time. But the thing is, is I have to sit in sleeper berth now for another two hours in order to get back the rest of my time for that day. Because basically you're splitting up your 10 hour break, you're taking two hours of your time at a later time, as long as you have eight hours first consecutively. But remember that if you had driven and you only have 30 minutes on your, on your, on your uh, clock from the day before, and you're an hour away, you're not gonna be able to get there because it's only gonna roll over the 30 minutes that you had prior the day before. So that's kind of how an 8-2 split works. Hopefully that was easy enough to understand. Before I leave you guys, I just wanted to give you guys a couple of tips that might help you guys, you new drivers out there. And that is that if you have an opportunity to stay at these shippers or this consignee the night before, do it because if they have parking available, if you drive less than a mile, your electronic log won't kick you into drive or onto an, a working status. You will be allowed to stay in sleeper berth. So if you can stay there and they just give you a dock, you can go bump the dock, get unloaded or get loaded, and then not start your clock until after you're done. This can come in handy because sometimes the shipper will take seven, eight hours to load you and then they'll run your whole clock down because like I said, once you go into a working status, that 14 hour clock starts ticking down. So if they took eight hours to, to unload you, that's only gonna leave you four hours of drive time. And you're probably gonna be able to drive three of those before you have to take another 10 hour break. So if you're getting unloaded at the shipper and you wait to start your clock, this is gonna give you a full clock to be able to drive on. So tip number two is anytime you can stay, like if, it, you know, if you've already driven 500 miles and your fuel stop is around where you're gonna be stopping, stay at your fuel stop because you can go on duty and knock out getting your fuel and doing your pre-trip or post-trip you know, at once. So you don't have to take 10 minutes to go on duty to do your, or 15 minutes, however long it takes to do your pre-trip and then go pull up to a fuel pump and then take another 15 or 20 minutes, knocking a half hour of your on duty time, you know, taking that off your clock. You know, you can save that time and do them both. Plus if you're at the fuel pump, you know, or the fuel islands, you got more light there. So you can actually look at your tires and see if there's a nail in there. And, you know, you can do a little more thorough of a job to, to see if, you know, you're ready to roll or if your post trip to see if anything's leaking or anything like that. So that'll help you out. And then the last tip, this is probably the most important tip for new drivers, is know where you're going before you leave. Check your map because when I first started, I don't know how many times I forgot to check my map, I would jump in the driver's seat, I would leave the safety of either a rest area or a truck stop or a shipper or whatever, and I get out into traffic, it's heavy traffic, and I realize that I'm supposed to be making a turn, but I can't quite remember what road I'm supposed to be turning on or you know when I'm supposed to be turning and I th either then had to like pull over and try to figure it out but then trying to get back on the highway is just kind of a pain in the ass plus you're not technically supposed to be pulling over unless it's an emergency so it's you're better off to check your map before and another problem that you might encounter is that your GPS might reroute it while you're driving and might just decide oh yeah well I found a better tr I found a better way and it might take you on either a route that you're not allowed to be on or you know there might be a low bridge or I mean if it's a truck GPS I mean still it might take you on a route that wasn't designated by your company therefore putting you off route and they might be giving you a call 50 miles down the road and say hey you're off route why are you down going down this road and then you might have to turn around this might 50 miles there and 50 miles back might cost you 100 miles which is close to two hours of drive time that you wasted <laughs> you're not even anywhere closer to to your final destination so this can you know save you a lot of problems you know if you just know where you're going before you leave and you want to do this while you're in the safety of either a truck stop or a rest area or somewhere where it's safe for a truck to park don't want to be trying to do this on the phone while you're driving down the road in heavy traffic or whatever or having to stop on the side of the freeway so hopefully these tips helped you guys out and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one if you like this hit that like button and uh, share this so other new drivers out there can uh, hopefully find my video and learn a little something. If you found it helpful, hit that like button and I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>